of Next Level Live. Very excited to bring you some awesome guests today. My buddy Michael Pasco, John Wetmore, and Grayson, one of his new agents, he's doing an interview with his outstanding Zach Luffles, who if you've not heard Zach Luffles talk, construction, blue collar, million dollar guy. There's plenty of people in this business that work their entire lives on issue a million dollars. And he's just really decided to listen and change. And so I think I, we had a great, great time for you today. A couple of housekeeping things that we want to get to. Number one, prescription drug cards. A lot of people using those. You can order them off the website. They're insanely inexpensive. They are a nice program. I can't promise you I know what they do with every medication. I've used them for years from 2008 to, you know, for five, six years. I always purchased them and had them because they cost about nothing to have and gave, provide them for my final, especially my final expense clients. Sometimes they called me and said, hey, it saved me X amount of dollars a month on my prescription meds. Sometimes it didn't. I don't know. It depends on the medication. But I had some clients with some of the more expensive medications that saved quite a bit. So it's a nice benefit to be able to offer them, um, be able to give them, I should say. Um, contract, and we're releasing a, a video later today that Corinne's going to get on and go over everything contract-wise. We brought on, some, we know we brought on a lot of new carriers. So um, AmAm -Am is launched and ready to move. So we're very excited about that. So please get your AmAm -Am contract. And if you have not, we have a lot of people are starting to utilize the product. Um, they love it. Um, we're working on a new direct mail program, mortgage protection, which you're going to love. I think it's, actually, I don't think, I know it's very different than what's out there. It's um, very creative, very aggressive. So we're really excited about that as well. Um, America, so a lot of the, you, if you see the bonus amounts that you're going to see later today with the, the men and women that are getting those, we're paying if your group's at 75%. So like I was talking to Mike Kilmat, and he's like, man, I can get an extra like 25, 30 grand a month. Yep, if I have 75% America. So we're very excited about that. The America Contest, 1,500 apps a week. We do that lottery. So we were just about 1,300 mics. So we're getting there. We're, we're pretty darn close. Uh, please, please don't forget the 8%. And we just keep talking about that. And a new agent the other day, and he's like, man, I, I, I wrote like nine grand of another company. The other company's great, but I missed out on the 8%. I just, I didn't even think about it. Nobody really told me. I'm like, we talk about it everywhere. So we post it everywhere, social media, do the whole deal. Um, sales conferences are coming up. Please just look at the website, Facebook page, get there. Don't miss the training. Uh, Rely Shielding, they're doing a special discount, Mike, so it's 50% off to all time for his life agents, right? You have to buy the product, and they cut your discount, they cut the price in half. Um, you know, most of us have bought it. We bought it because we realize we need it, and it is a pretty big, pretty big deal. This whole identity theft thing, we want to be protected just like everybody else. So, um, before we get going, Mike Sizer brought me a gift today. Mike, how much do we need? So, I said I would shave my head. If we do seven million life paid business in a month, correct. Now to give you perspective, the first year we barely did seven million in paid life business a year, and most companies out there don't do seven million a year. We, if we do what about one point five issue paid, one point five is what we need next week in life. Then Mike Sizer, you're not going to cut my head open. You're not shaving, right? Yeah, plenty of years of experience. Okay, Mike Sizer is going to shave my head next week. Um, I will forewarn you that I know I'm going to look even worse than I do now. Um, I don't think it's going to look good with my head shaved. I think it's we, just... We have a sample photo. We have a sample photo we're going to send out there. Out there. It's, not, it's not pretty, but uh, but I said I would do it, so we're going to do it. Bobby has agreed, mm -hmm. um, without any pressure, to shave his head when we hit $4 million in life business paid with America in a month. And we'll be knocking on the door doing that a couple months from now. So we're going to fly Bobby in and shave his head. I'm shaving Bobby's head. Nice. And I don't have experience, so I'm probably going to cut his head. Oh, so we're really excited. I, I mean, we're also going to give a check to Dream Center. We decided we're also going to go ahead and, with the shaving of the head, give them another $25,000 because we figure if we're going to shave heads and do something that promotes and markets and is fun, not so fun for me because I'm waiting for my hair to grow back, but it's fun. We're also going to make a donation. We've become a big, big fan of Dream Center and Pastor Matthew. Great cause if you're ever looking to give some money, give some money back to somebody. Um, very tangible. You can see the things that they do. So we're really excited. They're doing a big promo out in LA. I don't know how many thousands of free throws in 24 hours. They're shooting free throws straight for 24 hours. He asked me if I would come shoot free throws. And I said, I'm not going to help you. Like, I'm not your guy. <laughs> like, I'll shoot for a long time, but I'm probably going to be like 40%. So I'm trying to convince my son to go out there. He's a pretty good free throw shooter to do it. So um, without any further ado, please, I promise you, we've, we've very focused on what we're doing training-wise, very focused on what the men and women that are serving and talking about, how it'll help. You get neat dynamic with a newer agent, one that had no experience. Somebody's doing, I mean, they're all, they're all hitting the ground running. Some have been hitting the ground running for a while. Some made some changes. So... Listen in, we won't let you down. Great training. Let's get 1.5 next week. So Mike Sides gonna shave my head. And uh, I appreciate it, guys. Hey, how we doing guys? This is uh Mike Pasco here in uh, Asheville, North Carolina. Uh, I'm with Family First uh, Southeast and the Coastal Team with Athena. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to say thank you uh, so much for having me on this. 
Uh, I appreciate any time I can possibly give back to anyone at all. Uh, I know how much everybody has helped me and uh, I really appreciate being on these things. It gives me a little added motivation, makes me uh, get out there even harder uh, than what I'm working. So um, I'd like to thank Sean Mike, uh, Mike Kilman, uh John Wetmore, Athena, Lawfuls, uh, and everybody else uh, that has helped me. I mean, I have had so much uh, laid in front of me that I could practice from, that I could tinker with, and without that, uh, I wouldn't be where I am. Uh, so I really do appreciate everything. It, the list is too long, uh, from Dom with his phone calls to uh, taking different parts of people's in-home, uh, Frank, uh, everybody. Uh, so I just want to say thank you. Um, I was asked to do a video today to uh, talk to you guys about some of the things that I've been doing and why have I have uh, started having more success, uh, whether that's on the phone or whether that's in-home. Uh, but to just give a quick uh, background on me, uh, I was originally, before I did this, I was uh, managing orthopedic clinics uh, in Asheville, North Carolina. Before that, I did every job under the sun uh, as a beer truck delivery guy, lifeguard. I mean, I, any job you could think of, I did other than sales. So coming into sales, it was a little, uh, it was a little scary, but I, I, I learned quick that what I put into it is what I get out of it. Uh, it so many times it said to not treat this as a hobby and the reason you're not treating it as a hobby is because this is your income I mean you cannot treat this like a hobby uh, this is my job uh, I wish I would have realized that a little earlier uh, I didn't start really realizing that until the last year or so and my numbers have changed because of it uh, I guess to go through everything they want me to just do a little bit of everything uh, to start my phone script is uh, nice and easy uh, for mortgage protection, I'm calling up and uh, the guy's answering and I'm saying, hey, John. He says back, hey. I'm saying, I'm Mike with mortgage protection here in Greenville, giving you a call about that paper you and your wife filled out, wanting some mortgage protection through your loan with Wells Fargo. Remember filling that out? I get back, yes. And then I'm right into it. It's uh, great. Uh, I'm the underwriter assigned to your case. There's no doctor exam or blood work needed for this coverage. So what we have you do is I get out there, ask you a few questions, show you what options are available to you. Uh, John, what time are you and Mary usually off of work? He gives me a time and we set the appointment from there. Uh, just like the people that are most successful with their phone scripts, uh, there's not a whole lot of time for them to talk in it. Uh, the time is very short for them to talk. I'm controlling the conversation. Uh, I'm not asking, hey, when are you guys available? I'm asking, what time do you guys get home from work? Uh, from there, if they say six o'clock, then, hey, I don't have a six, I got a 6.15. Any reason you won't be home? No, boom, you're, you're in a door. Uh, final expense is a lot the same. Uh, my calling them up, John answers, hey, John, says, hey, uh, this is Mike with the Senior Benefit Center here in Greenville. I'm giving you a call about that form you filled out on Facebook, wanting some uh, information on the affordable state regular life insurance plans, and I got your favorite hobby down is fishing. Is that true? I'm asking them if it's true uh, because I want them to focus on the fact that that is their favorite hobby. How else would I know that? Uh, once they say, yeah, it's true, uh, I'm going right into, uh, all right, John, uh, I'm going to be out your area tomorrow. Got to ask you some questions, show your options. Uh, do you have any doctor exams uh, or any work tomorrow? They'll answer the question, and then I'll go from there. Uh, the big thing... Um, that I was uh, asked to talk about has been my in-home. Uh, I've been closing at a uh, much higher rate than I was when I started. Uh, the reason being is my presumptiveness. Um, um, my presumption before I head into any appointment is you fill this paper out. Uh, you didn't fill it out for for no reason. Uh, I don't like strangers in my room, my, in my house for no reason. I'm sure you don't as well. So. If I have that paper, uh, my number one goal is um, to get in front of that person. Whether they tell me no on the phone or not, I'm still going out there and I'm still door knocking their house if they tell me no on the phone. I don't know about you guys, but I pay anywhere from $55 to $65 for a mortgage lead. Um, I'm not giving somebody my money and not following up on that. It makes no sense to me. I don't walk into Walmart and give them $65 just to shop. No, it's 
that I'm going to go into Walmart and I'm going to buy what I want and I'm going to get what I want and I'm going to do everything I can to do that. So I'm not giving my money away for free. Uh, so reconciling all leads is, is huge for me. It always has been since I started. Uh, so my in-home, just to uh, go through it, uh, it's a lot the same, maybe a little bit of variance. So with my mortgage uh, appointments, my in-home, first thing I do is I knock on the door, uh, they come to me at the door, and as soon as I walk in, uh, I'm asking them if I should take my shoes off. The reason I'm asking them that is uh, just to break the ice a little bit. I would say 90% of the people say, no, you don't have to. I just get a little quick joke in saying, Oh, well, my wife makes me take it off, uh, take my shoes off before I walk into the house. So I always like to ask. So if it is a couple, um, my way of breaking the ice is not as much as other people with the uh, getting to know them thing. And it's not that I'm not getting to know them. It's just that I'm not dwelling on that or getting them to be too much my friend. Uh, I want them to know that I'm there for a specific reason, but at the same time, I want them to trust me. So I'll break the ice uh, quick. If it's a couple, the first thing I ask is how long they've been married for. Uh, and they will let me know. The reason I ask this is I follow up quick with, well, I've been married for only a year. Do you have any advice for me? That makes them look at each other, smile, laugh, and uh, give me uh, talk everything through. Don't go to bed mad stuff I've heard millions of times but the reason is is I want them to trust me I want them to know I'm gonna take their advice just like I want them to take my advice so once we get through the quick pleasantries uh, I get right into it um, I say hey my name is Mike uh, I'm with mortgage protection here in Greenville uh, I'm a broker I work with about 30 different companies there's like 500 different programs uh, you don't have to go through a doctor exam or blood work which is why I'm out here um, I ask you a few medical questions based on those medical questions uh, in my expertise I'm gonna find you the most amount of coverage for the least amount of money once we find something that fits your liking what we're gonna do is we're going to put an application in to see if we get you approved now I'm saying we're going to uh, I'm not leaving doors open I'm not saying well if we find something we can we can try it out no um, I, I'm telling them straight out this is what we're gonna do because it's what we need to do I mean it, it is what it is uh, after I get through that uh, the first thing that I like to do is ask them who their beneficiary is obviously if it's a couple there it, it's most likely gonna be each other uh, if it's a single person it's probably gonna be a kid or a sister brother whatnot I want them to think immediately of their beneficiary I want that person to be in their mind the entire time because that's the person they're covering. So if it's the wife, I want him to start thinking, well, wow, something happens to me tomorrow. I, I, I need her covered. This is who my beneficiary is. This is who my person is. And I want that thought process to be in his head the entire time. So that's why I'm starting with that. Uh, once I get the uh, beneficiary out of the way, um, obviously I go through my sheet, but I jump around a little bit differently throughout the uh, throughout the inventory sheet. So after they tell me the beneficiary, I say to them, "All right, John. Uh, so what I'm going to do here uh, now is I'm going to ask the questions, uh, ask you some personal questions, ask you some medical questions, and we're going to find out where you would be approved." Uh, now, whether that's for the entirety of the home or whether that's for a portion, I think we can both agree that having some coverage is better than having no coverage in place. And they, yes is always that. So I'm asking them both their age uh, first, uh, then I'm asking them both if uh, they're tobacco users or non. Uh, and then my next question is uh, monthly income. I'm looking at the monthly income. Um, to see what can be affordable to each and to have a good idea of where I'm going to place them. If John is making $5,000 a month, but Becky's making $400 a month, I am going to right there paint the picture with them and paint it for them to a point of what it's going to be like if John doesn't come home tomorrow. So I'll say, uh, John, as we can see here, I'm going to show you what the whole house, or I'm going to show you uh, what coverage we have, but I really do think it's important just right off the jump that we get as much coverage for you as we possibly can. Because you may be able to shoulder to blow a little bit if Becky were to pass, but she's, she's going to be in a really rough place, John. And obviously you don't want your wife and the uh, mother of your children to be out on the street. Is that right? And he'll answer and whatnot. 
So uh, based off of that, I'm kind of cementing home uh, where I'm going to go and I'm cementing home what the picture is going to look like. Obviously, I'm asking questions in there too so they can paint it for me as well. But I want them to be real certain and real clear on what's going to happen. Uh, my next question after that is I want to knock out the uh, life insurance objective uh, objection. It was one that I had when I was new a lot. Um, one I still get every once in a while, but it's not it's pretty rare now um so i'm asking uh do you guys have uh do either of you have any private life insurance on yourself that's outside of work now 75 percent of the people are a no so when i get the no i say all right the reason i say uh outside of work is because your work owns that policy if you leave if you get laid off something happens heck even if you die i've seen those policies not be paid out I don't think it's a bad thing to have life insurance through work because that's a that's another thing that could help out someone uh, when you pass. But I'm a believer in having something that you own and not something what someone else owns, uh, and completely relying on it. Uh, as well as that, uh, John, uh, I'm glad you have the uh, life insurance through work, but that's replacing your income. That's not what I'm here for right now. What what I want to do is I want to uh, concentrate on this house. He says, okay. Uh, if they do have life insurance outside of work, that's fine. Uh, one of my last clients had a million dollar policy. I said to him, uh, John, all right, million dollar policy, that's fantastic. You're making about 100K a year. Cool. Uh, something happens to you tomorrow, John, that means uh, Becky gets to live the same way for uh, 10 years. Or, uh, I'm sorry, 12 years. I don't know, 10, my, math, my math is off. It's uh, 10 years. So uh, I'm saying again, John. Uh, that's fantastic that you have it. You're replacing your income. You don't want your wife to live different. You don't want your wife have to shack up with somebody else in a couple years. That's fantastic. But again, I am I'm, I'm taking care of this house. This is what we're doing here. So once I get through uh, all that, I go through um, uh, obviously to see if there's any annuity money. I'll go through the medical questions. Uh, as far as my in home, when it comes to the medical, uh, the big ones I hit to try to be a little quicker is I say, uh, John, have you ever had a heart attack, stroke? Cancer, diabetes, get all no's. Okay, uh, John, how are the lungs? No COPD, emphysema, liver, kidneys, good. Uh, intestines, no ulcerative colitis, Crohn's, diverticulitis, anything like that. No. All right, perfect. So uh, what we're gonna do? Um, what we're gonna do then, John, is the last thing that I need from you is number one. Do you have any uh, major internal surgeries, anything like that? No. All right, I just need the med list. Uh, I've been doing this long enough, and I've been in the medical field where I know the medications are, so I know where they're gonna go from there. Uh, that is essentially my in-home for the mortgage. Uh, I'm going to show them uh, what the full mortgage looks like, and uh, we go from there. Now, um, with the final expense, uh, I'm doing everything the same. The only things I'm asking with the final expense that varies is I'm saying uh, my clients are usually in three different categories. Either they want to leave a legacy, uh, they're trying to get a little additional coverage, or they have none at all. Where do you fit? Uh, once they tell me where they fit, I like to ask them if they've had a... Uh, if they've had a additional amount in their head before I got there. Uh, most of the time, uh, they'll give me an amount and that'll be my baseline. So if they tell me uh, 10,000, then I'm gonna show them 20, 15, 10, uh, or upwards from there. Uh, Cause they're probably just telling me what, what they would feel comfortable with, but knowing that they can get more. Uh, my last thing that I do uh, that I like to share is with the 70 year old clients, uh, with the 70 and 80 year old clients with the $200,000 mortgage. When I first started, I was, I was scared of it. I, I was petrified of it. I'm like, I can't do this. I'm like, $200,000 is going to be paying two grand a month and I'm not going to be able to do it. Uh, until I heard more people talk about it, until I got comfortable with the, uh, with the idea of buying time. So at the very end, um, once I get through everything normally, uh, and I'm starting to show uh, them numbers. I'm showing them what the one year, the two year, the three years, whatever, to protect the home. Now, when I'm doing this, I'm flipping over the page and I'm putting down, all right, John, you're 70. This house is $200,000. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna play a quick scenario for you. I'm gonna play a scenario based on life expectancy. John, they say you're supposed to die around 78. It's just what it is. You could die earlier and that's fine, that's why you have protection. That's what I'm protecting tomorrow. But let's just play a scenario that you pass at 78. 
if you pass at 78, your $200,000 home that you have right now and how beautiful it is, it's going to keep appreciating. I'm trying to build them up, trying to make them feel good. So I'll say in about eight years, we'll, let's just say this house is 230000 So I'll write 230000 at the very top. Uh, now, paying eight years into this mortgage at the rate that you're going, uh, in eight years, you'll have this uh, total down to, say, 170. Let's just say 170. So, John, based off that, as you can see, between that 230 and the 170, there's sixty thousand dollars just floating out there. Now, I know I'm showing you right now a year's worth of mortgage protection, which is about fifteen grand uh, face value, and I know you're thinking to yourself, fifteen thousand, that's not going to do nothing for me. Well, John, it, it is because the fifteen thousand, which I write at the bottom of the page, uh, it's not just that; it's what we're protecting in the middle there. So I'm making a bracket and I'm putting sixty thousand dollars, and I'm circling that a bunch of times. So, John, I'm not giving you fifteen grand. You're giving your wife seventy-five thousand dollars. You're making sure that she can get her own place uh, and that she never has a mortgage payment again. So that's one thing uh, that really changed my business around. And like I said, the presumptiveness and just uh, just knowing that each lead is a sale. Uh, the most confident person in that room is going to be the person that's most successful. And I take to try to take that into everything that I do. So I walk in with confidence at all times. Uh, guys, I really hope this helped. Uh, I love doing this. I love being able to, uh, to do this. Uh, my number is 570-933-1516. If you ever need to reach out, any questions about what I said, please hit me up. Again, Sean Mike, thank you so much. Wet John Wetmore, Mike Kilman, uh, Athena, Zach, everybody. Hey, you guys are awesome. Uh, best company I've ever been a part of. Thank you for having me on. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hello, Family First Life. My name is Zach Luffles. I am with Family First Life Coastal. And today I've been asked to talk to you guys about my um, evolution from a carpenter to a million dollar producer. Um, like, you know, they say that Rome wasn't built overnight and ne neither did this. This took me about four years to accomplish. I could not have accomplished it though. Um, first and foremost, with, without support. Um, Sean Mike, Athena Villanueva, John Whitmore. Um, guys, I couldn't do it without y'all. Um, first off with Sean, he has built a, a an infrastructure here and a culture where it's okay to make mistakes and it's okay to, um, to grow and, and not be judged. You know, and that's real big because whenever you do make mistakes and whenever you are growing, you know, the, the, nobody wants to be judged. You know, I tell my clients that all the time. You know, hey, look, I'm not here to judge you guys because I didn't walk on water this morning. Therefore, I can't judge anybody. and Nobody can judge me. And this is a safe place that you can do that. Um, and you can grow and you can prosper and you can um, and, and really transform uh, not only your business, but transform yourself as a businessman or woman, um, as a salesperson. Um, and, and Sean, I really do appreciate it, man. Like you, you know, you always put the agents first. You could easily, whenever you go to bat for us and you, um, and you go to bat with these, with these lead companies, you know, I know that you could, um, get leads and, and charge lead overrides and, and, and really make a lot of money off the backs of us, but you don't, you, you pass all that to us, man. And Hey, I appreciate it. Um, as far as, is, is my journey, the way that this whole deal started was, is, um, the first two years of my insurance career. I issue paid twenty five thousand dollars, and I wasn't one of those deals where they started out fifty five and lead overrides and everything like that. Um, thank God we came over here uh, in two thousand and fourteen um, October. I think that my first year, I, well, that, that that last three months that I um, issue paid a whopping. Uh, five thousand dollars something like that we uh went to atlanta for um sales conference that year and and right before we went to atlanta um the guy that i was working for so i was a carpenter before i got into this and i was working for fifteen dollars or, or i'm sorry a hundred dollars a day uh 40 hours a week five hundred dollars a week okay um man you can't you can't buy cereal off five hundred dollars a week like I really like I look back now and I just really don't know how I even how I even made it. But um 
so so I was doing that. The guy I was working for one of my buddies, um, uncle, and he said, "Hey, look, man, after we flip this house, I don't have any more work for you guys." So what I did is I got on the phone and I called John Whitmore and I said, "Hey, John, I guess I got to take this thing serious, huh?" And we both kind of chuckled, you know. So, so conference was coming up, and and I knew what I needed to do was lock down some territories. Now, it's not like Facebook leads, okay? So, you guys have got it so good now, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of the the walk into school both ways in the snow barefooted, um, just from the the fact that whenever. I started out in the business, you had to lock down areas and you had to get big boy leads. And I'm talking mortgage protection, $60 a pop, you know, right off the rip. So, um, so things were a lot different then, you know, like you had a lot more skin in the game right off the get go. Um, and, and it was very, very, very stressful. Um, I have had more conversations with Athena and and john whitmore now those of you that know john whitmore and that have ever talked to john whitmore um you know that he doesn't sugarcoat things and um i was his first agent that he worked with so me and john whitmore have had some um some some come to jesus meetings if you will um but man i appreciate that and i appreciate athena um, you know, having my back and, and talking me through some of the toughest times in this business, because without them, I would have quit a long time ago, guys, you know, like, um, so back to, to conference in Atlanta. So I, um, I knew what I had to do. You know, I asked Sean Mike at that conference, I said, Hey, Sean, how do I get out of my own way? And um, let's just say that I can't share with you guys what he shared with me uh, because we have a mixed crowd. But you know what? Like, I appreciate that he cared enough about me to to tell me what I needed to hear and not what I wanted to hear. Um, and that goes for John and that goes for Athena, too. You know, I mean, like nobody wants to hear what you're doing wrong and nobody wants to hear what you what you need to do. Everybody wants to be pacified. And I mean like everybody, you know, like who wants to hear their shortcomings? Um, nobody does. And it, it was very hard at first to, um, to take that criticism and not take it personally. You know, I had to learn um, within myself that, you know what, like, they've got my best interest at heart. They're not telling me this to pick on me. You know, I mean, I was being a little bit of a baby before I got into this deal, you know? And like, since then, I, I, I think that, that my skin has gotten um, super tough. Like, I mean, I don't think I can go run through a briar patch and not get skin up, but you know, I'm, I'm getting there. Uh, but you, you know, like, I was like, well, what do I need to do, John? He said, well, East Tennessee's open. Okay, so I live in Greenville, South Carolina. East Tennessee is three and a half hours away. So um, I locked it down, you know, and I started going up there. And and at first that was very, very, very uncomfortable, you know, because uh, like I said, I, I, I hadn't been a big producer before that. And here I was betting on myself, something that in the construction business, I didn't have to do, you know, because I had a boss. I wasn't my boss. I, I didn't, you know, uh, and this, I didn't have to answer to anybody but myself. And that was something different, you know, because I'd had a guy with a whip on my back my whole life telling me, do this, do that, do this, do that. And now here I was and, and I had to be held accountable for my own actions and I had never been held accountable because I'd always worked for somebody else building their dreams, you know? So, I mean, it was a very big transition from employee to business owner. And I don't think that I grasped that. I mean, it took me a while because, I mean, believe it or not, guys, I'm pretty stubborn. And, um, and John and, and, and Athena can definitely attest to that as well as Sean. You know, um, I, I can be headstrong and hard to deal with, um, but... 
John was like, man, you need to lock down this area. And I started going up there and I'll forever be grateful to uh, John Whitmore and Jeremy Waller because they spent $234 to get my business started and they invested in me. And I was going to make damn sure that I went and worked as hard as I could because somebody took a chance on me and that's all that I wanted. You know, that's why I don't mind doing these calls. I take every agent's phone call that calls me. Um, I don't mind, you know, mentoring people and telling people, you know, sales tips and, and, and making recordings for people, you know, like as far as phone strip goes and just doing everything that I can to, to, to push the agenda forward of everybody making money. Um, because they didn't have to take a chance on me. You know, they didn't have to invest in me. Like a $230 investment might not seem like a lot to you, but at that time, that was huge for me. Because I didn't, I, I mean, I was busted and broke, you know, not only financially, but just as a person as well. And, and I sure as heck went in the business, man, you know. Um, the things that I've had to learn through this business is, is how to run a business, how to um, not spend all my money, how to delegate, you know, how, how to learn how to pay for leads. Okay, so... I mean, I've been busted and broken this thing, and I've been on top of the world, and it's never as bad as it seems, and it's never as good as it seems. You know, um, there's no other place in, in, that I've ever known that you can actually go from zero dollars um, in your bank account in one week, and in seven days, you can have 10 grand in your bank account. Never seen that before. You know, so like whenever I hit my lows, I'm always thinking, hey, you know, Zach, in, in three weeks, is this going to matter? In two months, are you going to be thinking about this time right here? No, you're not. Because with this business, you've got to have a quarterback's mentality. And what I mean by that is, is that, you know, a quarter, a good quarterback will go out there, throw an interception, come right back out, the first play, 50-yard um, pass reception. You know what I mean? Because he's got a short memory. You've got to have a quarterback's memory in this business because if you don't, you're gonna let um, you're gonna let let it beat you twice, and that's just like I always use this. I mean, I like sports analogies. I, I'm a sports guy, so. Um, you know, you'll see a team come out and they'll have a bad loss. They come out flat the next week, and and that 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 first defeat beats them again. You know, so you got to have a short memory in this thing. Um, there, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, but there's a a, a picture of a guy climbing up a mountain, and it's got somebody pulling him and somebody pushing him. And I feel like that is what. Um, Family First Life East Coast has provided for me because I've had John Whitmore pulling me and I've had Athena pushing me. And um, and I think that combination um, ha has really helped me grow as, as a producer and not, and not only that, as a businessman. Um, I think that... <sighs> I think that, that, that my evolution, um, can be attributed to, to the, to the, to the, to the growth of the company, you know, like I'm, I'm the poster child for this process. Like I really am. Like I come from no, um, sales experience. If you knew my background and you knew where I grew up and how I grew up and the the neighborhood that I grew up in and the expectations of people coming out of that neighborhood, um, you know, I, I should have been in jail or I should have um, been working at, at a fast food joint. You know, I shouldn't have been a million dollar producer and I'm nothing special. All I know is, is that I can outwork any situation that I get myself into. I can outwork it. So if you ask me how to to avoid chargebacks, go on more appointments. You know, if you're not on your goal, go on more appointments. Like we can dictate what our schedule is and how much income that we produce. There's no other place that I know to do that. You know, um, I can't thank 
Athena and John enough. Like, I'm surprised that y'all didn't just take me back behind the barn and shoot me. I mean, like, because I have been a pitiful little baby before, you know, and I've been very hard-headed and went against your advice. And, and, and you know, like, y'all have never told me anything that's ever hurt me or hurt my family, as well as Sean. Sean has never tell, told me anything that would ever hurt me or my family. Um, you know, and, and just the love that you guys have shown me, you know, like y'all believed in me before I believed in myself and, and y'all some saw something in me that, that I never, I never saw, you know, like if you would have told me four years ago, Zach, you're going to be in the millionaires club in four years. I would have been like, dude, you tripping because there is no way that, that I can do that, you know, and then look at me now. I mean, it's a major accomplishment and I am very proud of it, but you know what? Like I didn't do it by myself. Like, yeah, I went out and saw the clients and I did the work, but you know what? Like I had somebody pushing and pulling me, you know, and I, and I can't thank you guys enough. I mean, everybody that's taken time to, to talk to me, to help me out, to take my phone calls. Like I appreciate all you guys because I am a product of the system. And the system works. Like if you're wondering if this thing it, it, it works, look at me, man. I was slinging a hammer four years ago. Now I'm an elite producer here at Family First Life. And if I can do it, guys, anybody can do it because I'm not special. All right? Like I'm not. Again, like I can't thank um, Athena Villanueva. I can't thank John Whitmore enough. And Sean, man. I, I don't even I, I don't even know what what where to start with you, man. Like you you've done so much for my family, and and you've always you know put my family first, you know, in decisions that 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 you have made not only from a company, but just on some personal decisions and some personal things that you've done um, for me and my family, man. I love you, bro. I love you. And, um, and, and I've said it before, man, I'd run through a tornado of yellow jackets for you, bro. Like, thank you for always having my back. Um, guys, like this is kind of the story of my evolution from a carpenter to an elite producer. You guys are about to see the evolution of me from a, a, a great producer to a great businessman, because I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to pass a lot of people, y'all. Like, if you hadn't heard of Family First Life Mountain East, you're about to because we we going to be causing some noise this year, guys. Hey, 2019, let's rock and roll, baby. Peace. All right, guys, John Wetmore here. Um, have Grayson Hughes with us. Uh, the new agent been been with us here for, I don't know, what, six weeks maybe selling. Um, and he's been selling a ton of insurance. Um, he's on the leaderboard every week. You got, is that, is that your wife in the background? Yep. That's her. That was her. Say, Hey, <laughs> um, and a lot of people are asking for, you know what I mean? Like what, what's he got going on? What's he doing to have the success? And obviously talking every day, I, I know it's really just work and that's really about it, but we'll, we'll let you go through it. Um, so if you don't mind, dude, start with maybe a little bit about the background, you know what I mean? How you got licensed, maybe what you did before this, because you only got your license in what, is it January? Yeah, yeah. Cool, so yeah, give me a little bit about the background and I'll kind of guide you through some questions, man. Yeah, so uh, my background is that I worked at Enterprise Rent-A-Car as a branch manager the last three years. Um, learned a lot of hard work ethic, um, you know, tough skin, grit. Um, a lot of things that I learned at Enterprise uh, helped me to, you know, uh, be who I am today. And uh, I, lo I owe a lot to that company. Um, I, I will say I went through a lot of suits and expensive pairs of shoes, washing cars day in and day out. Um, you know, it, it taught me a lot of humility <clears throat> and how to deal, uh, with, with difficult, uh, situations and rejection and sales and just how to develop that grit. Um, you know, with, and dealing with difficult customers, um, you know, we, we would have, you know, I would, I would get cussed out sometimes, you know, we even had death threats at times. It was just, I worked in inner city Atlanta at enterprise, um, you know, and, and running people cars is a real need, you know, and, and it's, it's something that, 
uh, that people have to have to go to work and when they wreck their car or whatever, they, they need it. But uh, doing what I do now is, is really rewarding. Uh, you know, it doesn't even pale, it doesn't even compare to, you know, to enterprise. So <clears throat> it was a, it was a good learning experience, uh, you know, doing what I did before. And I think it prepared me for this, this next level here. Yeah, good. Um, let's go through and I'll give them some numbers just so, so people can get an idea. Um, and, and I know I, I, it's like, if I look at issue page first month in February and it wasn't even a full month, um, you issue paid 20 grand just over, like it was under 21,000, but over 20. Um, and then so far in, in, in March, three weeks in, we don't have the fourth week number yet. It is at 36,000. So like 56,000 when and you started after convention selling. Yeah. So literally mid February. Um, so 56,000 issued. I know you got a bunch more. Every time I say that number, you're like, but I have so much more pending. I'm like, I know it's coming too, <laughs> but you know, and, and a lot of people look at just the number, but I always look at how many appointments you're running. You know what I mean? And how often you're on the phone and how many leads you're getting. I can see how many leads you got in your CRM and, how many dollars you're making, watching you come down to the office and stuff. Um, so give them a little insight into kind of what's made those numbers happen, right? Because I feel like you're in control of it, which which not every new agent is, obviously. Um, so give them some little insight. You know, if, 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 if you're talking to a brand new agent, right, because there's a lot of them listening, and then some that have been here a while still trying to figure it out, what are the things that you would tell them to do that helped you get those numbers? Yeah, well, first off, you know, I'll say uh, what Gary Pegui said in one of our trainings recently. It's one thing to become successful, uh, but it's a whole nother thing to stay successful. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's that's one of the most important things that I remind myself of every day. Like, it's it's great to you know go one month and, and write forty thousand, but I got to continue that. You know, uh, mm -hmm. like James Weir in our group says, uh, rinse and repeat. You know, mm -hmm. uh, when he saw my numbers, that's all he wrote. <laughs> he congratulated congratulated me and said rinse and repeat so that's what I got to do um you know it's a it's a process and and you know I'm just so blessed uh honestly to be in the group that we have here with uh Family First Life Southeast um obviously I'm on you and Jeremy's team and Family First Life East Coast um you know and just to be to have access every single Monday and Thursday to live training to hear live dials all the you know Galen Ware uh um, Jermaine Clifford, Amy Michelson, everyone in the same office, you know, uh, just so many top producers. It's just, it's crazy. So I'm really blessed to, to be around that culture and that atmosphere. And another thing I just want to say first is, you know, nowadays, especially being here in Atlanta, we got Chick-fil-A, you know, True with Kathy, we got Delta, we got these companies that have good cultures uh, and it, it's kind of a thing nowadays to boast about your culture as a company. You know, everyone, that's the, that's the talk, you know, when you go in for an interview, it's all about the culture and trying to reach the millennials. Uh, but I'll say that uh, just real quick, you know, I was nervous at convention to even reach out to Sean, Mike, and uh, to talk to him because I hadn't even started or ever sold life insurance before. Uh, but the amazing thing is that Sean Mike added me as his Facebook friend mm -hmm. and, you know, put like on my post and stuff like that. And I was, you know, when I saw it pop up on Facebook, I was like, looking, that must be one of those suggested friends, you know, like <laughs> me to, to friend Sean. And then I looked closer. I'm like, whoa, he actually friended me, you know, so to, to, to see the CEO of a company, you know, re humble enough the guy flying around in a private jet humble enough to to reach out to a, a a new guy like me you know who am i to ever get a big head you know uh so that's the type of leader i want to follow uh you know so i really appreciate him and 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 you and and all the others uh dominique you know um but uh you know i'm just i just thank god that i just happened to fall on this imo first you know, I hear so many, so many new agents, unfortunately, that have had bad experiences with low comp, you know, and just kind of suckered into other situations. And uh, I just happened to come across a zip recruiter ad. <laughs> I had no idea I was going to get into life insurance. Uh, my dad, and I've told you this before, John, he's sold life insurance his whole life, passed away of cancer two years ago. 
um, of lymphoma in October 2017. But looking back, I think that God uh, knew, uh, you know, not to put me in this line of business until after my dad had passed because he probably would have drove me crazy uh, you know, with advice. And it would have been hard not to reinvent the wheel. So, um, but yeah, just uh, the, the question, I guess, was um, what I'm doing, what I've it's done. the so activity you've done to, to, to really get off to a fast start, right? Meaning the, um, the training, help them understand the perspective. Because I understood, because you called like every eight seconds, which was awesome. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But you were doing the work. All yeah. you did was ask for guidance. So give them some of the work you were doing. What were you putting in? You know what I mean? The study, the question, things like that. So exactly. So like Mike Kilomet always says, just go to work every day. Just do your job. You go to work. Treat it like a job. You know, I'm, the crazy thing is I'm not working uh, any harder than I did at my last job. I'm just making a lot more money. You know, I'm working just as hard as I did at enterprise. I'm still the same me, same work ethic. Um, I'm, you know, Athena said, if you treat it like a hobby, you'll get paid like a hobby. And I totally agree. Um, but as far as the, the practical things that I've been doing, I think, uh, you know, just like Galen was Galen Ware was saying at the, uh, the spring conference, um, I'm reaching out to top producers. So, uh, one thing that Mike Kilomet did at the very beginning of the conference, he, you know, he named out those that were making, I forgot how much issue pay per month, I think over, over 20 grand. And it's all he said, you know, these are the people you should listen to. Don't take advice from the people outside the, the door trying to tell you what to do. And uh, that really resonated with me, you know? Um, so, you know, Mike just says, go to work every day, um, call top producers, I think I call you at least three times a day. I'm calling Zach Tordowski. You know, I call Keith Christmas. I call Jermaine. I call Amy. Um, sometimes I'm just bored driving on the road. So, you know, I'll call them just to chat and kind of make up a question. Uh, but it, that's, that's one thing that's helped me more than anything, calling my upline in the home, uh, you know, and, and uh, being a student of the game, like you say, John. You know, at nighttime when I get done with my appointments, um, I'm pretty disciplined and structured, um, so I'll, I'll I'll literally write it on my calendar which which company and which application I want to study that night. So Mondays I'm going to do CFG. Um, you know I'll look at a specific product. You know I try to learn something new every day, but that's usually when I can't dial um, or I can't run appointments. So times that you know you really got to structure your time correctly because I wouldn't be doing that when I'm supposed to be dialing on a on a day like a Monday or a Thursday in the middle of the day. Same thing as far as working my pending. I try to, I try to do it in the car uh, between appointments uh, mm -hmm. and not during the times I'm supposed to be dialing. It does drive me crazy sometimes because they're asking for policy numbers and all kinds of stuff that I don't have while I'm driving. Uh, but it's, you know, and there's long wait times depending on the carrier you call. But when you're driving 30 minutes between appointments, it's the perfect time to do that. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, it's all about attitude and activity. You know, I think. Uh, one thing that family first life does really well is training on mindset, you know, uh, talking about how important that is and how to take the emotion out of everything. So, you know, I think there's been times where I called you and said, Hey John, I got a, you know, $3,500 sale or $5,000 sale. And you said, you know, don't get too high on it, you know? And then if I have, you know, one of those days where I get three no shows, just like you said, when we work up the numbers, I actually made four hundred dollars every no show. <laughs> that right. makes, you know, when we look at the amount of appointments. So my thing is, I'm not going to stop dialing until I have the amount of point of appointments I need. Um, so, you know, even if that means I'm, I'm dialing till nine o'clock at night from seven thirty in the morning, you know, eight o'clock in the morning, I would say. You know, I'm not going to stop until I have 30 appointments at least, yeah. you know, and uh, if it gets too late, I'll try to dial if I get a no show, or you, you know, uh, do stuff in between appointments. But my goal uh, every week is to have a minimum of 30 appointments, which most weeks I've been able to do that, you know, and I think as far as dialing, Dominique obviously is, is great on the phone. Uh, I would highly recommend Matt Smith. Um, you know, if Matt's listening, he's, uh, he's one of the best, you know, I've learned a lot from you, Matt. Um, 
you know, so getting good on the phones, just like Matt says, is 80% of the business, 15% of the business is in home. And then 5% is product knowledge. And from my experience, that's, that's been really true. Um, so, yeah. Not, sounds like you've just been a real student of the business and, and haven't tried to do much outside of what's working. <laughs> right? It yeah. seems pretty simple. It's like, hey, copy what's working and go to work. It, it's, exactly. it's not any deeper. Um, so I, I appreciate you sharing that. Why don't you give them, um, let's give them a little bit, um, let's go some lead, lead, your, your lead flow, lead strategy, your thoughts on it, mindset on it, because you don't hold back. Right. And, I, and that's, that's obviously because how do you get 30 appointments? It's not magic leads. He just gets a lot. Um, so we don't have to have a long in-depth conversation about it, but just, just to know, because I know you, we joke about it in our chat group, you know, the magic ones, but um, give them a little idea of that for some of the newer people, your, your strategy coming in, your thought process on it. And even if you, what you told me yesterday, I loved, if you remember that part, but just give them some thoughts there. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we have an ongoing joke at the office that John has a, a special drawer in his office. And I'll tell people that because it's, it's kind of funny. I'm the new guy and several top producers have reached out to me asking what leads I use. <laughs> and I'm like, you've been in it for three years. I'm like, you have all, you have all the good ones. No, um, I'll, uh, you know, I, I told Zach Twardowski that I was just, my my wife cooked these amazing homemade cookies and I just went door knocking the entire weekend. That's how I ended up writing 25K. And he believed me. He was with Bobby Bridges and he told I could hear him telling Bobby that's what he did. He thought it was genius. And I was like, dude, that's not gonna work. Don't do it. Um, but you know, we always say John has a, a drawer in his office with the magic leads and he just hands them out, you know, but that's not true. Um, everyone uh is Facebooking me, you know, calling me. Uh, asking me what type of leads I'm using. And uh, I think quality matters, obviously. Um, and we, I mean, most, if not all of the lead vendors we use have high quality leads, in my opinion, from what I've seen. But much more importantly is quantity. So yes, you get quality leads, but you have to get enough. And uh, that's one thing that, I mean, I'm new and there's been several weeks where I'm like, oh man, I forgot to buy leads on time. And it always showed up in the numbers. You know, I didn't issue pay as much as I could have. Um, so if John, for example, says, hey, Grayson, uh, I might ask, hey, John, what do I need? How many leads do I need to issue pay 10, 10 grand uh, this week? He might say, well, you need at least, you know, 75 leads, you know, Facebook, let's say. Well, I'm going to get 100 because <laughs> I know I'm not John. And I just want to do it just in case. So that's what I did. When John told me to get X amount of leads, I would always get a little bit more. You know, and I think uh, now I heard uh, Millie, uh, Porcina, and, and Jonathan, you know, saying that they're lead junkies. And I was like, man, I want to be a lead junkie too. Like, you look, they're, they're getting the red jacket and making that much money. I mean, we should all be lead junkies if that's the case. So uh, I decided to put up you know, three Facebook, uh, four Facebook campaigns. I'm not talking about for all the agents I have because I haven't even started really hiring yet. You know, that's just for me. But I'm going to get to the, I would much rather have way too many leads and be able to scale back if I need to than be sitting around in a parking lot, like you said, John, and, and uh, trying to dial because I don't have appointments. So I stack my schedule just practically. I literally, I do mainly final expense. I do a little bit of old mortgage stuff. Uh, but I stack my schedule for on the hour. Now you have to, you have to just like we talk about at our office, you know, um, a quarterback in the NFL doesn't show up right at game time and say, all right, I'm ready to play. You know, they're there a couple hours early stretching, doing their warm ups. you know, uh, planning, strategizing, doing everything they need to do before the game. It's the same thing with leads especially me being new at this, I, you know, there's so many little cities. I, I run Alabama and West Georgia and I didn't, I, I only knew a couple of big cities in Alabama, but I feel like now I could draw the map of Alabama, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm always on Google kind of figuring out where I'm going to go. Uh, but I try to have at least two appointments. If, if not, I ideally three or four in a similar area before I move on to the, to another one. But in order to do that, you have to have a, a high quantity of leads. Uh, cause if you're doing Facebook, for example, it's going to be a, you know, 
40 to 60 mile radius. And uh, if you only get 20 leads or 40 leads, you're going to be driving a lot. You're not going to be able to make, you know, 10 to 12 appointments on the hour. So. And one thing we've been talking about too with that, when, when you talk about more leads is, is obviously better. It's like a lot of people worry about risk. Like I'm risking my money. Will I make it back? And it's, if, if you go, do you have more risk with 20 leads or more risk with 60 leads? Right. Cl right. Clearly more risk with 20. You know what I mean? It's like your chances. I mean, it's like when you, when you stack the deck, it makes it so easy. And then you, you're able to make the income in, I mean, you're getting paid in a couple of days, right? So it's like now you got the money back and you can reinvest and you, you, now you got plenty of money to pay the bills where when, when people are trying to scrape by and scrounge up lead money, it's tough, man. And you stay in that never ending circle forever. If you don't, or if you just go out of the, out of your way and invest heavily at the beginning and then you work everything right, the right way with CRM and follow ups and things like that, your lead, your lead flow doesn't need to stay where it is forever. Yeah. When you start working your current clients and things like that, but to get started quick, I mean, it's, it's, it's clearly working. Um, my, uh, just to say this, you know, my wife, like everyone's wife was nervous about me buying leads, getting into the business, you know, if it was going to work or not. Well, I got a, uh, a credit card where I get a lot of my, you know, uh, sky miles, uh, on it. Yeah. And that's what I used to buy leads. And now she's really happy. She's, uh, she, her family's in Spain. She's from Argentina. So we already got several trips to Spain for her nice. pretty much because of my, you know, my lead budget. <laughs> awesome. That's so now awesome. she wants me to buy more leads because that means more travel for her. I love it. They, yeah. She does come around. They do come around. Um, let's end with some in-home stuff. We got probably, I don't know, three, probably four more minutes, something like that, four or five more minutes. Um, give me whatever you want on, on, on in-home kind of what you've learned. I mean, we all say relatively the same thing, but let's hear from your, your words. Maybe even if it's how you approached it to learn it, um, but given what you're doing, you know, love to hear it. Yeah. I mean, uh, my in-home is it's very similar to everyone else's. I think, uh, with all the trainings that I, I kind of, you know, one thing that Trey Honeycutt said was, uh, not to confuse, uh, technique with personality. And I think that's, uh, pretty profound because sometimes people see let's say Brian Mendenhall's in home and they think they have to be Brian Mendenhall yeah. <laughs> you know they they think they got to be you know Paul McLean or whoever but that might not mesh perfectly with your personality you know um so i think it's important to learn the technique and even to learn the things that they're saying and, and i'll copy word for word things i've heard other people say that that works you know but i'm trying to be myself because I think clients can see when you're not as sincere, you know, they can catch on to that. And, uh, you know, one thing that, uh, that I do, um, so when I pull up to a home, uh, one thing, this is what I personally do. I, I pray for the client <laughs> as I'm pulling up and I say, Hey, if there's anything God that I can do to help them, help me help them. And if not, if they're in the best possible situation already, as far as the current coverage they have, for example, just, you know, let me be sincere and walk away from it. If that's the case, you know, cause I don't want to be that guy replacing policies just to replace them for commission. Um, but I think uh, going into a home and being a really good listener is something that I think has helped with sales. Um, you know, a lot of times people open up to you. I mean, this, this past weekend, the first two ladies I sat with had uh, serious, you know, personal issues and uh, just broke down and, and started crying. First two ladies, they're very vulnerable. And, uh, you know, I just listened. I just sat there, you know, and, and the minute they think I'm going to jump in with my sales pitch, I asked them another question about their personal life, about what they're, what's important to them, you know, and, uh, and I, I mean, I don't spend two hours in the final expense appointment, so I'm not that agent because I got 10 others and I'm late. I'm, I end up being late to all of them because <laughs> I stack them so heavy by the, I, I usually don't make my last one because it's way too late. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think to show that you're, you have a vested interest in the person, um, you know, and like we always talk about being direct, I think, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of sales tips and stuff, I guess I could say, but 
just uh, in general, just like we're always talking about on the podcast and the next level calls, being direct, you know, and just uh, one thing I say to every single client that I think helps from the very start is I say who I am. As, as soon as we build that rapport and they start laughing, like Gary Piggy says, the minute they start laughing, I bring it down and I get serious. And I say, you know, my name is Grayson Hughes. Again, um, I specialize in final expense, burial coverage, uh, mortgage protection, retirement planning, and also regular life insurance. And uh, I take what I do very seriously because it can completely change a family's financial future. And I state and wait. And I don't say that like a sales technique, but I, I want to see what their response is, you know, uh, because there's been appointments where I walked away because they weren't going to take it seriously. Yeah. But mortgage protection or final expense. But when I say I take my job seriously, because it can change your family's future. And I look them in the eyes and I, and I don't say anything. I just wait for, for them to, you know, say something. And then I know whether, whether they're serious about it or not, you know? Yeah. So that's kind of the first trial close, I guess you would say. Um, but uh, that's, that's it, what's helped me the most in home. Yeah. hundred percent. I think it's, it is when you have that mentality, let's go out and help people. And, and, and that our job is serious. And, and I think you state in that helps set the stage and, and helps provide structure for, for the entire appointment and, and know that um, you, you are there to help. You know, I, I think that's a home run. And I think after that, the rest probably falls into place for the, for the right people that really want to help their families. You know, that's what it's all about. So I, I certainly appreciate you getting on and, and, and sharing that info. Um, if there's any final thoughts or anything, we've got about another 30 seconds. If you want to wrap up with anything, more than welcome to. Um, I've never been good at last words. You can say no, brother. We can end with that, my man. <laughs> I, I just didn't know if you had any more thoughts on your mind, but all is good. I appreciate everybody getting on. Um, thanks for getting on and sharing, dude. And I know you're probably going back to dial right now. So, again, appreciate I your am. time and, and keep leading, man. Appreciate everything. All right. Thank you, John. It's been all an right, honor. Guys. Have a great day. See you, bud.